What have you been doing today? Uh, getting on the last few last minute Christmassy stuff done. I went up to see my gran to drop off her present and grab my present, and then I went down to see my dad to do the same, and then I popped into the co-op to grab a few last minute things. You love going to that co-op. Where the fuck else am I going to go? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Only local supermarket we've got. Not really many other options. Literally a little. Please. They all look like a tink. <laughs> You're too good for little. I've never heard such grief. <laughs> I mean, I, I genuinely... I don't know. I just don't, I don't really... I don't know. I don't... I don't I've tried... I like little. I've I've shopped in Lidl before. I've when I first uh, when I first moved out on mine, like ten years ago now, was it? Uh, I mean that I, that was I like I, I went to Lidl a few times to like for like a weekly shop because I was like oh it's cheap and I'm you know I'm at mine I'll get some cheap stuff. That's was handy. And that, but I don't know, I just didn't. Yeah. Do I have you on record in saying that Lidl's uh, main problem is the fact that they try and copy everybody else's product rather than doing their own products very well? Mm. Pretty much. There just doesn't seem as much... Lidl on blast. It doesn't seem like there's much, as much like good variety stuff when it comes to like actual groceries and shit. You know, Lidl's probably main success is the bakery. Mm. They're baked goods. They do really well baked goods that the co-op doesn't they do. Never need it. I mean I mind when I mind when we were teenagers we there was what there was a we loved the fact that there was these chocolate there was these big chocolate bars they sell in Lidl that was like Forgetting. it was like twenty P each or something. You, they were quite mm-hmm. big and you could just go in and get a fucking we'd just go in and grab a bunch of them. Lidl chocolate's unsurpassed. Or it's, it was unsurpassed at that point. Yeah, was that was good. a revelation, going into Lidl and getting the cheapest chocolate, but it was like better chocolate than Cadbury and there are other, you know, Galaxy and all that. It, I guess it was just because it was something new, but it was really tasty chocolate. Yeah, and it was fucking, it was like a half the price of regular chocolate bars at the time, but like twice yeah. as big and so it was just like, you know, teenagers, you've not got much money, you're just like, I'll fucking grab this shit. Do you want to hear something that makes me you're really all talking about that. Mm. Do you remember a time where we would be able to go into a supermarket with 20 pence and go out with like a family packet of uh, biscuits? Mm-hmm. We are now old enough to remember food being cheap. Right. Right. I, rem- I remember. One thing I always remember the exact price because I used to get them all the time is uh, Cadbury did these like wee box of cookies. For mm-hmm. years they've done them, and I mind I used to go to the shop and I would always grab a wee box of them as a snack for the day. And I remember, I, I distinctly remember when I first bought them when I was like a teenager, like 13, 14, that a box of them was like 30 pence. Mm-hmm. And that same box of cookies, fake Cadbury, now costs a pound. Literally more than triple the price it was like 15 years ago. I mean, what's the markup on these? Actually, insane. That is insane. Fredo's is a classic. Fredo's. You know? Did Fredo's we used all to be like? Them. They used to be like what? Ten p. Ten pence. Ten pence for a Fredo. Now they're about like thirty pence. or they're like thirty or forty now. They're a pound. Are they? A, is it actually a pound for a Fredo? I swear it's a pound for a Fredo. That's fucking extortionate. That's they're not even that big. They're like fucking no. tiny wee things, tiny In wee America, chocolate frogs. They could go as high as a fiver. Fuck's sake, man. I mean, that's because they don't get Cadbury or there and their, their Hershey's chocolate is fucking shit. Do you know, their Hershey's chocolate isn't even classed as chocolate. They don't even use that much. Aye, I've heard that. It's like they don't use the amount of cocoa you're supposed to use that you'd need to have for it to count as actual chocolate. Mm-hmm. That's that's cr- how can you market weird. something as chocolate when you're not even selling chocolate? I mean, it makes sense why it tastes like fucking shit. It tastes like fucking garbage. It really does. It's disgusting. I tried it once because I thought, you know, like everybody, I guess, it's anywhere you go, when you get products from somewhere else in the world, it's kind of exciting, you know, because you're like, mm-hmm. what have they got there? 
you know, what are they eating? And then I ate Hershey's and I was like, no one in America is a foul place. They're eating shit chocolate. <laughs> Look at the Germans. Aye. They're fucking... They're good, good shit. Mm-hmm. And I think in a lot of like Norwegian countries, they eat a lot of dark chocolate. It's mm. meant to be better for you. Like got a lot of antioxidants. But just eat good chocolate. Hershey's isn't even... It's dark. It's, it's dust. It's dust. That's pretty, it's pretty poor stuff. Mm-hmm. Have but, you ever uh, been kicked out a chat by a guy called Clyde? Because I have, and you know, maybe some people get their things, but I'm not one of them. Well, fucking excuse me, but it's not my fault Clyde came in here. <laughs> I'm just trying. How do I report, How do I report Clyde? <laughs> fucking. I can't believe Discord's. Uh, I don't. I can't, I can't believe Discord's got a wee bot that's like you're using up our bandwidth and you're not even talking to anybody. Fucking get off. <laughs> do you know it makes sense though? It does make sense. I mean, are they you really? Know, are they really in that desperate need to save a bit of money? <laughs> time is energy, like, I guess. And Jesus, every penny helps. Do you think Christmas is over commercialized? Do you think it's shoved in our throats? I mean, it is, but I still like it. <laughs> I, I was uh, watching like these comedians and they were basically saying that if you don't celebrate Christmas and you come across someone who celebrates Christmas, they shove it in your throat. Mm-hmm. It's everything. It's And not only is it everything for them, it's got to be everything for you. That's just crazy to me. Like... But it's true. Like, I, I love Christmas and I guess I shove it in people's throat, you know? I mean, like, I, I don't think I do. I don't think I. I mean, I love I, I love Christmas and that, but I don't. I don't really do that. I don't think. I don't, to be fair, I don't really know. I don't think I know anybody that doesn't celebrate Christmas. Like, mm-hmm. I don't really know. I don't think I know any like Jewish people or just or just like any other people that like don't that celebrate like other things at this time of year or just maybe don't celebrate it at all. Like, I don't really know anybody like, like that. Christmas is worldwide. That's that's what I love about Christmas, and everybody can celebrate Christmas their own way, and uh, that's why you know you you can celebrate it your way, and it doesn't have to be the same way that I celebrate Christmas. Exactly. Exactly. Do you think you'll stop being a stupid bitch for this Christmas? What the fuck? What have I done? You haven't asked me how my day was. How was your day? I had a nice day. Um, my mum came over and yeah. exchanged gifts, all that kind of stuff. Had a nice wee lunch. I would like to give the listeners a recipe for roast potatoes that may change their life. And I hope they're prepared for that. Are you ready for this? Okay. Salt and vinegar roasted potatoes. So you boil, part boil the potatoes with some balsamic vinegar and then you allow them to steam dry. And then you put your oven tray, a roasting tray, with goose fat. You let it get real hot. You take your potatoes, you give them a wee coat and a flour, and you lay them at the fattest side on top of the sizzling fat as you've taken it out of the oven because you've let it heat up. You let that roast turn in maybe every 15 minutes for an hour. And in that meantime, you make an aioli. Right? You right. with me? I'm um, okay. So the aioli is a mix of like mayonnaise, lemon, and parsley and garlic. I chose roasted garlic, but you can make your own for the combination of ingredients. Your potatoes, one last splash of salt and vinegar, a eh, balsamic vinegar, and salt them. Dip that into the aioli. It's it's a perfect roast potato. That does sound pretty good. It's a very lovely roast potato. I've been. Uh, you haven't. I've been having roast potatoes. Do you know what I'm having for Christmas dinner tomorrow? I'd love to know. A Chinese. <laughs> That's pretty good. The Chinese celebrate Christmas. Uh, I'm going to my. I'm going to my sister's for uh, for Christmas dinner, and she's just. She was like, "I were having a Chinese for uh, for the That's dinner," and I was like, "All right, that was fine with me." <laughs> you know. I have no issue with people having something other than turkey for a Christmas dinner. 
Mm-hmm. I think that that kind of sacred, it just needs to end because like some people just want the day off. You know, uh, and making a whole turkey dinner is a fucking. That's a, it's it's like it's literally the it's whole work. day working on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is work. And you know, that. the least thing can go wrong, and then you're blamed for it. And you know, it's just make, yeah. it's just easier to either have something that's kind of pre cooked that's nice, or just order something in like a Chinese. Mm-hmm. But Chinese, I guess, are only really open. Because it's Christmas, they're not like. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah, know if they don't. They don't they really, really celebrate Christmas. They don't really celebrate it, so they don't. They I mean, imagine usually... some do. I mean, I guess it, it depends how they were brought up and where they were brought up and all that. But. Mm-hmm. Aye. Do you, how are you um... celebrating Christmas? Hmm. How are you celebrating Christmas? What do you mean? What do you mean? How? Um, same way a normal day. Open presents, go see family, mm-hmm. stuff my face. I'm gonna cast some spells. Um, <laughs> I think people have got it all wrong that you know they use Halloween to cast spells. I think I have a fascinating subject to talk about. Okay. You, you know Father Christmas. Yes. I want you to Google. Oh no! In fact, don't Google it first. I want. I want, I want to test something. Have you ever heard of La Bifana? I feel like I have heard that before, but I don't really know what it is. So, it's an Italian folklore in which there is an old lady uh, cleaning a house in Italy somewhere in the mountains. And she was like asked by three wise men in their caravan like, have you seen this baby king? This baby King Jesus. And she was like, "Eh, no, if you're looking for Bethlehem, you know, it's that way. So they told her to follow the Northern Star and she would find the baby Jesus because she had declined her invitation to go along with them in their caravan. She then changed her mind and she took some sweets and candies and baked goods and a sock and sought after the baby King Jesus. She got lost. And so, in her way to find Jesus, when she came across like kids and stuff like that, she put kids and candies in their wee socks. What does that sound like? Uh, it sounds, that sounds like, like Santa, doesn't it? Aye, aye, I guess. It sounds like Santa. So, that's an Italian folklore that's been around, I think, maybe longer than Santa. Like Santa, there's, Santa has got many origins, you know, like a Germanic origin and stuff like that. Aye. Yeah. But... Th- I think it's interesting to talk about that this was a woman, right? And she did all the things that Santa did. Mm. But but it's the way that she's depicted as the as the topic of discussion. Because right. she's often depicted essentially as a witch. I mean but when you think when you think of Santa, you don't think of him as a witch. But Santa is a witch. How else can he accomplish his feet? <laughs> you know, he doesn't have like a long pointed nose and a boil and like going a bit with a broomstick. You know, I mean, is 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 it not a thing that the that the I don't know if this is a, an actual I don't know if this is true or if this is just something people made up. But is it not a thing that the old like Santa Claus design that we know the day is like basically a corp a, like made up was basically made up by corporations and it was not actually. That isn't actually for any folklore, any kind, any kind of mm-hmm. lore or stories. It's just a generic uh, Christmas figure, I guess. Because like it adopts a uh, Germanic clothes. Uh, Santa used to be green. Ah, I know green, that. I've heard that before. Green Santa. I really can't stress this enough. See the fact that I know every time I see a red Santa, I'm just immediately thinking of Coca Cola. I don't like that. <laughs> I really don't like that. I don't want to be thinking of Coca-Cola whenever I see a red Santa. I would love a green Santa. Do you know what I'm talking about? Aye. Uh, I mean, every, it's because of that fucking that oh, ad, pr- that fucking ad that's on every year with a train and fucking... Aye. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christmas is an industry. You know, that, yes. it's a sad... I watched The Grinch and it taught me that. <laughs> that Christmas was an industry. You know, or the... 
rubbish and that gets transferred to the Grinch. And that's why he's a big, mean, nasty Grinch. Who'd you like? Who'd you who'd you who'd you like better as the as the Christmas antagonist, the Grinch or uh, Krampus? A weighted question. Mm. I mean, I love the idea that Christmas is a dark side. You know, mm-hmm. it's no all about the nice. It you've got to be nice and spread cheer and all that kind of stuff. That's the point. And some people just like, well, if they're bad, they get Krampus. I like that. You know, it's a balance. Have you seen the uh, that Krampus movie? It mm-hmm. came out a few years ago. That's crackers. I, such a weird movie. That like, whole fiasco. <laughs> I went, I went into it thinking it was like a proper like horror movie, but it's no really like it isn't. It isn't. It? There's like a bunch of like, like comedic moments mm-hmm. in it and it's like very silly a, a lot of the time and it's, it's like a graphic it's... novel as opposed to a horror because it's I mean it's got horror elements but it's kind of diluted with all the comedy and the the weirdness of it all that I guess the because obviously they're in a snow globe and they can't escape that's the point spoilers oh Spoilers if you've never seen Krampus. I was pretty. I mean, it's pretty old at this point. It's been it for quite a few years. So, imagine most people. I, I don't imagine it's a movie that most people would be bothered seeing. No, like if you've not seen it by now, you're probably not that bothered. Mm. Uh, you know, it, you could probably so. figure it out if you did watch it. But um, uh, Krampus is an interesting, an interesting character. You know, I always think though that. In every Christmas story, there always kind of needs to be the person that does nay. You know, there always needs to be the person that's the anti-Christmas. Mm-hmm. Like in uh, Polar Express, it was the wee boy that didn't believe, or in The Grinch, it's The Grinch. Um, Miracle on 34th Street. It's for some strange reason that construction worker who lost his job and got paid off by big corporate people to uh, tarnish Santa's reputation. See, I love, right, one thing I love about the whole premise of that storyline in Christmas movies, where it's like, there's always there's always a Christmas movie, there's so many of them that have got these stories, you're like, mm-hmm. Santa Claus actually exists, but nobody believes in him anymore, and the spirit of Christmas is dying and all this, blah, blah, blah. But there's mm-hmm. a huge plot twist with every single one of them, and that is, if Santa Claus exists, that means he's definitely dropping off gifts, which means there's gifts there that the parents never got their wings. So where the fuck do they think they're coming from? <laughs> no one ever talks about that. Like, literally, there has to exist gifts under every single kid's tree that the parents clearly did to buy because they came for Santa. So if they don't believe in Santa, where the fuck did they come from? And where do the parents think that they came from? Or are they all just, like, acting ignorant about, like, oh, the other person, or the or the, their dad must have bought them and just no tell me, or the mom must have bought them and just no tell me? There's just no chance that that's a thing. Like, it's such imagine a plot that, hole for every single one of these stories that have that. Imagine <laughs> the, the government actually took advantage of it and was like, oh, well, if you're all getting presents, it's because you need to pay us a tax, and that's why they, they, mm. just, they just assumed it was the government. Throw them all these presents off and they that paid a the tax for it. That would be a good way of doing it. Mm-hmm. That is fucking... Ugh. What is... Uh, what do you think your favourite Christmas movie is? This is, a, this is a, a subject I was talking about to Alan that uh, I've actually not watched a lot of Christmas movies. Really? Really. There's maybe. I've, I only watched The Grinch for the first time last night. Wait, what one? The, like the, the animated one or the Jim Carrey I've, one? No, I've never, I've never seen the animated one. The animated one's pretty good as well. I would kind of like to watch it. I don't know. As I say, like, I just. I don't know. Christmas for me, I never spent watching Christmas movies, if that makes sense. There's some good ones. Some... Well, this is it. There is some good ones, but I've only recently started uh, getting into them, like watching them at Christmas. <clears throat> it's a Wonderful Life really it's... did have an effect on me. It's a classic. That is a cl- the word for it is a classic movie. That is a classic movie. Did you cry at It's a Wonderful Life? Uh I don't remember. I've, I've not seen it in fucking. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I genuinely don't remember if I would have or not. You know, I I watched it for the first time I think last year, and I was, it was, you know, the whole time through it, I'm watching it and I'm going, it's a really shitty life. Like this is, (laughs) 
you know, this is a dwindling spiral. This right. is this isn't no, this is anything but wonderful. Right. And uh, but uh, honestly, you still need to watch it. It's a great movie. I do need to. I need to. I do need to watch it again because it's been a very very long time. But I've 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 only have like vague memories of the movie. Like I know what it's about and what happens in it and that. But mm-hmm. there's no. It's just... uh, I mean, it's really dark. Like mm-hmm. honestly, like I think it's obviously to show that it's a wonderful life. But man, that like, I was not it's, expecting. It's pretty. It gets pretty bad. Mm-hmm. But um, do you know what? The intro has always struck me as being just really weird. How so? Do you remember the intro? And it's like um, angels talking, and it's like the stars and stuff. Oh, I. Oh, I no that. one, nobody ever talks about that. Everybody forgets about it, but it's, <laughs> to me, to me, it's just weird. It's like, why have you? I get it, like you know, it's the an, angelic or the divine or whatever it is, but it's just weird. Mm. It's like it, it, it doesn't need it. What's I, your uh, favorite Christmas movie? My favorite is definitely Scrooged. It's basically the. I have the, seen that. I have the, seen that. That's yep. a great one. That is very good. Bill Murray basically is. Uh, yeah, it's Bill basically Murray. a Christmas Carol, but with Bill Murray, and it's fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good story. I it's love good, that one. Good, 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 good old, good old Bill Murray fun. Mm-hmm. It's very, very good. I uh, also am quite fond of Elf, as as everybody. It's a great Christmas movie. I don't like Elf. You don't like Elf? I don't like Elf. I love Elf's message. I just don't like it. But the the reason why I don't like it is not because it's a bad movie, it's because everybody loves it. Like, it's no the movie you all think it is, but Fucking I mean, it's a good movie. Hipster on here. <laughs> it's too hipster, popular. How like. dare you? Happy holidays, hipster. Really? <laughs> you, only, you, only, you only like the indie Christmas movies that anybody knows about. <laughs> You know, I've seen a meme, right? And it was like all these like really shitty Christmas movies and obviously everybody was white in it and somebody like retweeted it and it was honestly like 300 odd movies uh, tweeting saying, yeah, it's going to be a white Christmas. Mm. It's not true. That is very true. <laughs> There's so many Christmas movies out there that are just sheer shite, just starring white people doing white people shit. Uh, just the most generic, like fucking Hallmark ass, fucking uh, just... Uh... Because people... We'll just watch any Christmas movie as long as it's about Christmas. See, I'm not. I, and, I, 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 don't, I, I only like the good Christmas movies. Uh, there's, there's, there's plenty of Christmas what movies. What are the good Christmas movies? Hey, uh, let's see. Let me think. Uh, I'll tell you what's a good one. The Muppets Christmas Carol. That is a great one. Michael, that is a Michael great Caine. One. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. There's some. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of shit. The fucking the Santa Claus way. Fucking Tim Allen. What a lot of shit that movie is. That. Oh, it's I've not watched that. It's very just gen, very generic. Just. I mean, it's pro- honestly, it's probably one of the movies that people do like because the, the nostalgia fit with for their childhood mm. and stuff. But it's really just no. It's not that good. I thought it's very just generic and just not. You or not very interesting. do you have a movie that you consider a Christmas movie that others don't? Like people who would consider Die Hard a Christmas uh, movie? I don't know. I consider so. I consider Lord of the Rings a Christmas movie. Why? I don't know. Because it maybe it came out at Christmas. I mean, I. <sighs> I guess Harry Potter, came, Harry Potter. People consider Harry Potter a Christmas movie. No, that's just stupid. Uh, oh, you heard that, all you Potter heads. It li- no, up. You can't <laughs> sit there and be like, "It's a Christmas movie." How come it's a, how is it a Christmas movie? Well, there's all these scenes when it, we get Christmas that in it. I, you mean the movie that takes over that that shows you the course of a person's entire a year, a, 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 year yeah. a full year of somebody's life? Of course, there's going to be Christmas in it. So is every other fucking holiday. Like, they, I guess, like, like it's it's a Halloween movie because they have Halloween scenes in it, like one or two. Like no, <laughs> recounting the year is like something that you would do at winter, i.e. Christmas kind right. of thing. So it's just it's just no. Just because it happens to have like one Christmassy scene in it, it doesn't mean it's a Christmas yeah. movie. It's not it's not tied around the holiday. It has to be tied around the actual holiday in some way to be a Christmas movie. You can't just say, oh well, it happened during December. So it's a Christmas movie. That's just no, makes no sense. I mean, what the, if this, 
what if the story starts at December and ends in December? Like it's a year over the year. I mean, if it's got, if it's actually got, if the story has literally anything to do with the actual holiday, then I. But if it's not got anything to do with the holiday, if there's no mention of Christmas at all. It just happens Is that to be based. A movie? I genuinely, I don't know. Because I've not seen it in a long time and I don't remember if there's anything actually in it about Christmas or if it just happens to be like, that Christmas. if it just, it just happens to be that that's the time that it's happening that the story's set in. I don't know if there's a, I, can't, I genuinely can't mind if there's anything like that. So I've not seen it in a long time so I don't know. But a lot of people see me think it is and I just, I'm just like okay, whatever. I think the only movie I can think of that I would maybe that I've always associated with Christmas is The Wizard of Oz and that's because it's own uh, it's, I don't know if it's anywhere else, but in the UK, ev- every single Christmas day, that movie's just on telly, no matter what. And I, I remember for, there was a lot of years where every year we, me and my family, would it would always be on. We'd have it on as we were eating Christmas dinner and all that, and it would just be on. So I, the only time I ever seen it was it was on Christmas Day. So like I always associated it with that, but it's like it's literally nothing to do with Christmas at all. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess it's like theatre. The Wizard of Oz, a bit. It's less mm. of a movie and more like a, one of those like night outs at the theatre types. <coughs> it's, very pa- it's, it's very pantomime I mean, would, I certainly wouldn't uh, say that it was a Christmas movie, though. It, it definitely isn't. I just associate it with Christmas because that's the mm-hmm. one time I ever see it on. But, um, that is weird. That's a good movie. That's a good fun mm-hmm. movie. It is a good fun movie. And it's, uh, it's it probably like, suits everybody. Yee. You know, everybody could watch The Wizard of Oz and be like, you know, it's Christmas. <laughs> Have you seen Bad Santa? I've heard of Bad Santa. That's a pretty good movie. It's, I mean, I don't know if it will get you in the it's spirit of the holiday or anything like that, but it's pretty it's good. No, like, I de- from what it, I've heard, it's nothing to do with Christmas. Well, I mean, it's literally about a guy who plays a Santa, and there is like... So he's an out-of-war character, actor. He's no, well, he's, he's not playing Santa as an like an actor. He's like a, he's like a mall Santa. Okay, basically, he's, out of work he's a he's a mall Santa, and he does he basically hates his life. And I, I mean, it's definitely Christmas. It's definitely Christmas. A uh, definitely a Christmas movie. It's based all around the holiday and all that. But it's just it's just it's not the kind of Christmas movie you would normally you know be like oh feel what? good and all happy and all that. It's, it's just oh this guy's a just a cunt. <laughs> And just hates his life, and it's just an no, arsehole. And it it's sounds just, like it's. It it's just, sounds like it's a wonderful life. It's it was it's basically a dark comedy, mm. you know. It's just, but it's it's good. I don't know, like, like uh, maybe I'll I'll give it a go, like a late night watch. But mm-hmm. it, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know really what to expect from a Christmas movie. I guess because I've not seen a lot of them. I watched The Polar Express. Have you that's, seen that? That's pretty good. Uh, um, I have seen it, I bet it was a long time ago. It's, uh, it's rem- a good I re- movie. I remember liking it. Yeah. I guess, like, for me, like, I just... The one thing I guess I associate Christmas is Halo. Playing Halo. Just because like, that you would get it at Christmas time. Christmas, got it at Christmas, Halo 1 with the Xbox. You know, life-affirming uh, experience. Then Halo 2, when it came out, Halo 3. You know, it was all December. Uh, Halo Reach, I think. Yeah, the, the, mm. it's all usually like launched before December. Halo, so you can play it at Christmas. Um, because I played Infinite, and I completed it. Oh, I've not actually played the. I've not played the campaign. Yeah, I need to get a. Uh, I need to get fucking Game Pass again so that I can play it. It's. I've heard. I've heard that it was pretty good. Right, I wanted to hate it. You wanted to hate it. Right, I, I went, I set out, and I was like, I'll, "This is shit," you know. This, this is bad. Blah, blah. I wanted, really wanted to hate it. But god damn it, that story is good. I have heard, I have heard good things. The story about is it. good. I have heard good things. I, I won't spoil it, but I have many theories. Mm. Many, I, I hopefully we'll get to talk about, because um, I think that I know exactly what they're they're doing with these characters and the story plots and. I'll need, to, I'll need to get Game Pass at some point and uh, play it. I'm not sure when I'll get around to playing it. 
Uh, maybe I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing that is good about it that it doesn't spoil anything. You, like you know, it's an open world type, type yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah. Right. So over the world, there's these uh, banished propaganda towers, and your aim is to find them and destroy them. Right. Right. But the uh, they put a grunt in charge of the announcements. Oh, I think I've seen a clip of that. Like one oh. clip for that way with a grunt saying some shit and it's pretty funny. It's honestly, it's it's like uh, I I'd akin to, to like Vice City with the radios, <laughs> like just sitting listening to that grunt, just losing <laughs> shit or having this job. It's <laughs> it's crazy. No, I, I I seen one clip of that. I think somebody posted it on like Twitter or something like that, uh, and it was pretty fucking funny. Mm-hmm. Just the dialogue is just superb. Like I, I'll, I'll, what I will say about the game is like the the dialogue they have thought about it. They've mm. maybe went a wee bit overboard, but it's pretty good. That's good then. I'll try and get to it at some point. I'll hopefully I'll try and get to it before the end of January because the end of January the new Pokemon game's coming out, and then by the time I finish with that, Elden Ring will be out. So fucking, and I'll be playing that so, for God um, knows how long. So. What what is it this time? Pokemon Onk and Yogurts? No, it's a uh, it's an old world. Oh right, it's yeah. the and one that's uh, is set. It's actually it's set in the Gen Four region, but hundreds of years ago. So it's like very primitive. There's like all the towns are very small. The Pokeballs are like made of like wood and stuff. Like it's very old technology. So uh, it's like per set like hundreds of years in the past and. The region is like the origins of the of the Arceus and all that, the god of Pokemon, basically. So, wow. pretty quite interesting. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, and for once they're actually changing up the gameplay a bit. There's like new, mm-hmm. there's new like mechanics in the battling, and the the Pokemon in the wild actually like attack you, the trainer, will like freaking knock you and all that. So, so, like, is it still turn based? Ah, like so, like you you walk about. And uh, if you see like a wild Pokemon, it's only some of them. Like I think if you run into like, if you run into like a fucking Bidoof or something, it's probably not going to attack you. But like if you run into like kind of bigger Pokemon, they'll basically come at you and like start like try to attack you. And you just, I guess you just throw your Pokeball at them. And as long as it's thrown oh. near them, it like just starts it starts up the like turn based battle. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Yeah, I probably won't play it. I don't. I don't think you would. But I'm. Um, um, I'm I'm looking forward to it, but I'm cautious of it at the same time because Game Freak have been have been fucking lacking since Gen Five, with shit, and it's just uh, we'll you're just happens. trashing everybody on this pod. <laughs> I mean, as any, every anybody will agree, there's been a, there's been a clear decline in quality since the Gen Five. Basically, since they went to 3D, there's been a very obvious decline in quality overall mm. of the games. I still enjoy them for the most part and still have a good time playing them, but there is a clear, the, there's a clear decline. Do you, think, do you think the loss in quality is more like because they've went to 3D? Absolutely. Because like there was all the, the it's magic not, of uh, like 2D was kind of like well, that's what we were used to. Well, it's not. It's not like it's not because it's not just because it's 3D. I think the issue is that they just didn't know how to do it properly because it was literally a company. Because even up to Gen 5, Game Freak was still a fairly small, like, game company in terms of, like, how many people, like, actually worked on the games. Mm-hmm. Um, because Pokemon was really the only thing they did. Um, and it was because it was all, like, handheld 2D games. It was not like, they didn't need, like, this big team of people to, to work on it. So, like, when they went to go 3D, like, most of the people working there, like, the game designers and all that, they literally had, like, no experience doing 3D stuff. So I think I think a lot I think because so much work and time went into just them trying to make the games three D, it basically made it so they couldn't focus quality control on a lot of the other aspects of the game, and it, they ended up not having as much stuff today in them, and just the overall quality wasn't great in a lot of in a lot of places. The Pokemon stadiums they were three D, and I, I would consider them very good games. Like I but they like, seem to work. At the same time, though, that was also like there was a lot less Pokemon they had to put in the game. Also, it was a different company that made that. That wasn't a Game Freak that actually made them. Um, and also, that was literally just like it's not like they had to like make like a whole region with a story and characters and all that. It was just basically a battle simulator for the most part, and then like the mini games. I guess. So. I mean, yeah, I guess. 
that I'm happy they're only been like what 150 or 250 Pokemon with I mean, the second one works. compared to the you know by the time they got to Gen Six it was literally over 600 at that point. In fact, it was 700. It was like I think it was 712 exactly. So many Pokemon they had when they went to 3D. So I saw a lot, a lot of things lot. to turn into 3D and I they just I they really. When they knew they were going to go to 3D, I think they really should have realised that they need to, like, they probably should have upgraded their their team a lot. It's not like they don't have the fucking money for it. I mean, Game Freak, it's not like it's Game Freak's money. The Pokemon company are the people that have all the money. But they surely would have been nice if they were like, it's aye, we're going, to throw, we're going to throw some millions at you so you can hire a whole team of 3D animators and all that to help with us and mm-hmm. give the games the quality they should have. But instead, again, I just were like, ah, we'll just do it. And then that was not great. <laughs> I mean, maybe they're just kind of developing their style for, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it's just kind of part of the the aesthetic that they kind of want to portray. <clears throat> like, they I mean, don't mind that. it's Because obviously, like, you know, you can get better experience. Like, just speaking from an artist's perspective, like, as you say, like, it's maybe not the best. But, you know, next one will be better. I don't you know, mean, I, the people I don't... that you designed the games that you love have, have gotten better or have perfected or gotten better at their art to best demonstrate their games to you, I guess? I mean, the art's fine. I don't really have a problem with the actual, like, you know, how the game look. You just said, look. like, the graphics were shit. The, I the did not. I said nothing about the graphics being shit. You said the uh, Game Freak can um, live forever or die when, tomorrow. When I'm talking, the, the, the decline quality I'm basically talking about is the actual, like, gameplay and the amount of things to do in the game the actual like just the way the game looks is fine i don't really care about that i, d- I mean they don't look great in comparison to all the other 3d games uh but it doesn't bother me it's like as long as there's like as long as the games are fun and there's plenty of shit today it's just like wait it if they, what would what would you prefer it to look like then like no it looks fine like i'm not bothered no, the, no, no, the way no, it looks does no, not bother play, me like... at all <laughs> To play. The, the issue is that just there's no there's nothing to do in them. Like there's the main you do the main story, and then post game stuff after the story. There's just so, like when you compare gen, when you look at like the Gen Four and Gen Five games that were the last like two D ones on like D, on the DS, mm-hmm. the amount of shit at the games after you finish the main story. There was just there was just so much shit today. There was so much. There was so much quality of like just here's all this new sh- shit to explore and fuck a bit way in the post game and all this and oh here's here's the battle the battle tower that's uh, like all this whole fucking cool designed area with all these different like challenge modes of like doing all these battles to try and win and and then they go to the Gen Six game like literally they go to Gen Six 3D and it's like all right you finish the main game post game what can you do oh there's a some cave you can go and catch Zygarde in. That's it. That's literally it. There's like fucking nothing else to do That's after you finish the main game. And it's just like, it's so disappointing after going through two games that I've had shit tons of stuff. Yeah. To go to a game that that's really like, once you've finished the once you finish the league, that's it. There's fucking nothing. You know, Sun and Moon got a bit better with it. They added some, there's some cool shit today with the Ultra Beasts and that. That was kind of cool. But again, it was very... Felt very mean, lackluster you, in comparison. You won't, wanting, you won't go wanting on Pokemon games. Uh, you know, there's me. one out every week. You won't. That, that's that's week. honestly that's probably one of the other issues that really mm. declined the quality of the games overall. Is that for some fucking reason, for there was like there was like a five or six year period where they had a new game out every year. It was bad. Even though and before that, like with the two D games, it was like usually every like couple of years. You get a new one, but it was like for for a while it was like X and Y next year Sun and Moon next year Ultra Sun and Moon mm. next year fucking a uh, oh it was like X and Y and then next year the fucking Gen three remakes then it's Sun and Moon the next year then Ultra Sun and Moon the year after that then fucking another game after that it was like the Let's Go games and then Sword and Shield right after that and it's like fucking Gear Gear Cell's a break Gear Cell's time to actually work on these instead of like pumping them out like this it's fucking ridiculous. The money they would have made would be ludicrous. I mean, that's the issue. The, the issue they've got is they, they don't really have much control over it because it's like the Pokemon company are like, well, we need. They're like, well, the anime is ending soon, and we need new. And the cards of you know, we've done too many sets eh, with the cards. 
mm-hmm. for this generation, we need a new generation. You just need to get it done this year. And then, they're, they're like, they don't have control. They basically just tell, like, the game needs to be out, like, at this, at this well, time. And they just have to, they just have to do it. Because the games are basically, at this point, just marketing for the fucking anime and the, t- yeah. the toys and the cards and all that, but at this point. I mean, po- Pokemon's an industry. It, it is. It's, it's literally mm-hmm. an industry. It's just fucking... The games are literally go to the point of being, like, just advertisement, basically. It's like, here's mm-hmm. the new game, here's the new monsters, go buy all this other merch that's actually I mean, going to make us money. <laughs> the games can still be fun. They're still fun. Like, I'm not yeah. going to I'm not gonna sit here and act as if, like, every... As if, like, that I've played through, you know, the games and been like, this is fucking shit. Like, I've played through them and been like, all right, kind of shit that this isn't in it and that, but overall... I still enjoy doing it. I still enjoy catching and mm-hmm. catching the Pokemon and battling, and you know, still have a good time. So honestly, I'm the same for Halo. Like, I, I, I'm probably Halo's bi- biggest critic and biggest fan at the same breath. Aye, they give they give me everything I want, but I'm still like, no, do you want to know what? <laughs> this is shit. Send it back. It's Have true. you seen the cat the cat ears for the Spartans? The cat ears in the multiplayer. Oh, they so that. it's a. a you know, this whole cash loot system, you know, upgrade mm-hmm. cosmetics, all that shit. One of them's a, a cat set where you can add me- like mechanic cat ears to your Spartan suit. Of course. They're, they're doing that to, doing that to pull in the weeps. <laughs> ludicrous, ludicrous amounts of marketing and money. It's right. crazy. I mean, they're basically just throwing in everything. They're like, oh, well, people will... You know, they're, they're, I mean, that's it. They're like, oh well, there's a group of people out there that love that love fucking the cat ears and the cat girls and stuff, all the weebs and all that. Sure. So we'll just throw a pair. Will, we'll, we'll just throw that as a cosmetic, and they'll make money off it. That's it. People will want it. Doesn't matter if it fucking is a bit unfitting for the series and seems a bit out of place. <laughs> if it will make us, if it will make us a few extra quid, we'll throw it in there. It'll never be me. It'll yeah. never be me. Same. Same. Do you know what's funny? Like, I like the idea of me joining a match where I just look like the basic one because I've not bothered with any of the cosmetic shit and everybody's running about like Iron Man and all that kind of stuff. No. And people just are like, that could either be a beginner or somebody lethal that just doesn't care who's just playing, you know? No. They don't know who, it could go either way. They could either be really bad or they could either be really good. It's true. I just fucking, I'm the same, man. I just, ah. Uh... I, I I absolutely refuse to pay for cosmetics in a game that's already mm. charging full price for its... I mean, the multiplayer is free, but... That's true. I'm just like, no, nah, man. The campaign's also free in Game Pass. Also... If you, well, if you, not free, but if you've got Game Pass. Also, it's like, I'm going to buy cosmetics for a first-person shooter. I'm never going to see my fucking character when I'm actually playing it's the game. so true. So, like, why the it's fuck so would true. I care how I look? It's bragging rights, in it? It's just to show you who got you got beat by or who you get or who you got mm. so like if I, I could don't get it if I, I could actually, it. if I could actually see my character I'd maybe care I'd maybe get a bit merry shit about customising them and make them look cool so I can see them but if I'm not seeing them how, I just don't care do you want to know how like 343 are just like bloody hypocrites mm. I hate what Halo's become and I will say this <laughs> do you remember the the fun or you know the fun excitement part of when you could get I think in Reach you could customise your armour mhm you know, you know, in Halo, is it three? You could be an elite. Mm-hmm. Is it multiplayer? And yeah. that was great. Loved that. Loved that as part of the game. That's that's part of that is what made me love the game. Now they've went and chipped that off, and they're trying to sell just that. They don't give you the option anymore. Wait, do you have to actually? Do, can you actually? They, they, there's an option to pay to be able to play as a as a covenant. No, 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 that was just an example, so oh, okay. like, that's the point, but Aye. that'll be next, won't it, you know? I can imagine them doing that. Two battle pass, here's, oh, here's the Covenant guy, and here's all the armour he's got. Oh, here's the here's the Arbiter armour set for a fucking mm-hmm. Halo 2, and it's fucking 30 quid. 30 well, quid, now, 30 quid, or play the game for like 100 hours to get in-game mm-hmm. credits to buy it. It's like, fuck off. It's just bad. I just... As, as, as I say, I just don't like it. I hate what Halo's become. Because all the stuff that I used to love about it, they're they're splitting it up and they're trying to sell it, you know? Yep, sell it piece by piece. Because it just kind of feels like the inevitable end game for it is to just sell just the individual parts. 
you know, if you want one chapter in the story, here it is. Because That's fine, fucking if, hell. if all the missions are just gone for A to B and doing X, Y, and Z, then what's the difference? You know? Is, I wonder if that will be their next step. The next Halo game is a fucking episodic chapter, fucking, and you buy one chapter episode at a time for the mm-hmm. campaign. You know how that meme, a Marge Simpson? You know, Halo turned into Destiny so fast. Mm. I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice. It's pretty bad. I think that's that's their aim. I, I think is to be kind of like a Destiny type game. I mean, aye, uh, it's pretty shit, but at least it's still a fun game at the end of the day. It is fun. I did have a lot of fun playing the Halo Infinite. As I say, I'm their biggest fan, but I'm also the biggest critic. I do love it. Are you excited for tomorrow? I. I am. I'm excited. It'll be fun. Christmas is always good fun. Uh, my mum bought Sasha and Lady Christmas presents. Ah. Uh, do you believe in buying Christmas presents for your pets? Absolutely. It's fun. Aye. It's Christmas. That's a fun thing for them. Are they um. Have they been good with like the tree and no rip up presents and that? The only pro well not problem, but uh, the only issue is like lady's tail when she's happy and mm. just smacks the shit out of the tree. Swings <laughs> everywhere, so there's bobbles launched at will. <laughs> so like a wee cannon, like a wee slingshot with her tail just swole. Pretty funny. Although she's uh, developed a penchant for taking rolls of masking tape and chewing them. What the fuck? I think she like sometimes gets a wee bit bored, but I don't know. But I, I, I probably should. I don't know. Surely she's, she's, a wee rascal. surely she's got plenty of toys she could show. She honestly, she gets all the attention. She gets all the toys. I think sometimes she's just a wee rascal. She likes to just tear mm. stuff up. She's developed a wee habit where she likes to get a cardboard box. I'm just shred it. <laughs> just shred it. Rip that shit. So like, and she's like, I've watched her do it sometimes. And it's like she's dead gentle. She just, she doesn't like tear it apart. She just takes a wee bit by bit and <laughs> just shreds it. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You rascal. Yeah. She said that. um if you ever invite Clyde into my life again, that I should take legal action. Sorry, I. I will never let it go. Fucking Clyde, I, it's not my fault. Fucking talk to Discord about it. I didn't they make? I didn't they fucking make Clyde show up? Talk noise shit. Know if I, I can't reply to him. I can't ask him if you know if, how he is. How is he having a nice day? Because he seems like a nice little robot. Oh wait a minute, Clyde bot. He doesn't have an email address. Maybe he has a phone number. Oh, I think I've killed him. Yeah, that's one thing. That's one thing about Discord that kind of annoys me sometimes. Is that they're they, they're so desperate to try and be like, to try and make all the technical stuff be all like quirky and humorous and fucking no sound like it's technical stuff, and it just is annoying. <laughs> Mm. So like everything has to have a name. It's like oh, Clyde bot. They kind of just they kind of just have a message pop up saying, "Uh, your connection to this person, or you're not connected to anybody in this call. We'll close it because you know to save bandwidth." They kind of have that. There's to be a Clyde bot has to have a fucking name and talk to you as if it's a fucking person when it clearly is not And it's just like fucking. I sound like a cynical bastard, but it just it just annoys me that shit. <laughs> What is Turbo? I've no idea. Is I, 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 I honestly it's, I don't even. It's like you buy Turbo. It's basically like a premium Discord service that you can buy and you can give it to servers, and then like it gives you like I think it makes it so you can use like animated emotes and stuff. I, I don't. I honestly I'm not hundred percent sure exactly what it does. I've never got it myself. I know some people that buy it, but I don't. I honestly don't really know exactly all the benefits of it and if it's even worth it. This is all. how old. This is how I know that I'm really old. 
I only know how to basically boot up this app and phone you. <laughs> See if you were to ask me to like start a conversation or you know anything like that, I'd be not. Nah, I'm in. Idea. I'm in like fucking. How many servers are man? Two, three. More than one. one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Wait. I'm in like 20 plus servers, 20 different wow. like chat rooms basically. Wow. Uh, basically, I mean, I've got mine for my stream and then I've got other streamers that I'm friends with and like sometimes stream way or talk to and I'm in their discords on that they've got for their communities. Um, and then I'm in a few communities that are, I'm in a few communities that are like uh, for specific things. Like I'm in, I'm in a One Piece discord group. Which is nice because I, I'm basically only in it because as soon as the recent chapter is like as soon as the, the fucking chapter is scanned and online, they like, immediately I get pinged on there and I can be like, oh, I can read the chapter immediately before I fucking see good. any spoilers and shit on Twitter and that. So that's good for that. And then I'm in a few that's like, I'm in a few that are like for some games and stuff that I play. Because it's good, it's good, it's good to have. A, that's the one thing is going to be Discord. If you're in like, if you're, there's a game you're playing a lot of, or something, uh, and you're in a Discord community that plays like for that game, you can just go in there and just be like, "Here, does anybody know what the fuck this is about?" And then you'll always have somebody going like, "Oh, it's this and that thing." They'll like, like explain what they what it is, and you'll be like, "All right, cool." Rather than having to fucking rather than, rather than having to fucking Google it and try and find shit, you can just be like, message can't be like, "Here, fucking what the hell is this about?" And then some kind right, of so. Uh, since I've since I've never looked for these communities, uh, my page is blank and I've got suggestions. Would you like to hear the top suggestions? Okay. What we what we got? Axie Infinity. Clueless to that. I don't know what that is. Roblox, I've heard of that. Roblox. And official Fortnite. <laughs> so it's basically but... it's basically here's three here's three Discord groups that are probably some of the most populated ones. And we're and they're not recommended to you because we think you have any interest in them. They're just recommended because they've got probably shit tons of people in them already. Uh, yeah. I really, I, I, you know, I don't like a crowded room. You know, I'd prefer it if it was, you know, not people all screaming and shouting over each other about what's the best skin to pick. I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess I can get some use of this. It'd be nice to. You. Mm-hmm. It's almost like Reddit. That's kind of what I think it was like. It's it's basically Reddit, but as a chat room, pretty much mm-hmm. for a specific that's, subject. That's cute. Yeah. I mean, you, what, depending on the kind of like server you go in, there'll be like a bunch of different chats for specific things. So it's like no one chat that's just flooded with everything. It'll be like, you know, you go to a, like a, for a game, there'll be like a chat that'll be like support mm. or questions, or here's a chat room for like finding people to play with. So it's like it's not all just on one fucking thing. It's like all sorted, mm-hmm. and you can go to the specific channel of the thing you want to talk about. That yeah. does sound really helpful. Discord's pretty useful. That does sound really useful. Yeah. Mm. Do you know? I was thinking who could get a kick out of that. Mm. Old people. Yeah. There's probably fucking you know, like old millions. Of, you know, so many people there that they could speak to. There's the, the drop in that. Discord groups are having. There's probably a fucking Discord groups for like fucking sewing and baiting and all sorts of shit like that that people talk about and mm-hmm. share recipes and all that kind of shit, you know? I like to bear my recipes uh, on my podcast where people can really listen <laughs> to it. <laughs> exactly. Aye. And then they can cook it at him. Mm-hmm. They don't have to have some fucking four essay story about the cunt's life before they actually see what the recipe is. Oh god, I hate that. Can we talk about that? Can we take a moment to recognise that as an society that we've collapsed? And that's the reason. I, I... Honestly, <laughs> really, every time I go to Google and I try to Google a recipe or, you know, like, try to try something new, I get some fucking essay on some bitch's life that I don't care about. I don't care. I just, g- give me the recipe and, g- you know, wh- why do you need to tell me about you? That's not what I asked for. And what do you like um, do you use do you use like the Google Chrome app when you're like browsing for like recipes and shit? Uh, I don't know if it's the app. I just use it on like the web browser. On my so, phone. I I don't know if there's a 
I don't know if there's one for it on the phone that you can get, but I know on, the, on I think on Chrome and Firefox on on desktop at least, there's an add-on thing you can get called a recipe filter, mm. <laughs> and it basically goes to recipes. It basically goes on the websites when you're looking for the recipes, and it just shows you the recipe and just cuts that out is everything so else. So useful. How have I never heard about that before? I've, uh, That's so it's, useful. It's, I've, it's been such a like a meme for quite for for like a couple of years now. People talking about how they're so fucking sick of going to look for recipes and oh, all you, these stories I'm, and shit. And you're just I'm, like, fucking give me the recipe, you prick! I don't care about your how your mom made this for you when you were seven and all this shit. Like just I'm fucking not. some stupid shit about how when you were <laughs> sick, you were you know your mom made you this soup or something. It's like I don't care. Give me the soup. <laughs> Just give me it. <laughs> People fucking writing recipes thinking they're dating, doing a creative writing class or something. Exactly. Exactly. Jesus. Hey, so mighty, man. It's so annoying. It really is. Like, it, do you know what's so annoying about it? It's like the tease. You know, like you're searching for a recipe and then you see something that you like and you're like, oh, do you know what? That would be brilliant. And you click on it. And then there's an advert and like you scroll and you're the intro to the website and you scroll and then you're just making this like spiel. Mm-hmm. You know, just this absolute spiel, and you're like, you keep scrolling, and it's it's almost like the more you scroll, the more spiel there is. Like it's like the recipe never comes. <laughs> you know, and you just know you just need to flick back. It's just complete trash. I hate that, it. I mean, I mean, that'd be a nice, that'd be a good April Fool's prank. Somebody writes up a fucking article for a recipe and it just doesn't have a recipe. It's just a fucking long story. <laughs> like, just pure just pages and pages of a story and there's just never a recipe at the bottom. Hilarious. I wonder how many complaints I'd get. Fucking honours. <laughs> Absolute honours, man. That'd be so good, though. I would actually just keep scrolling to see. It's crazy. Oh. But, uh, if you're If you're a person... If you're a content designer and that's how you do your content, oh, just don't. Just right. don't play with your audience. Don't play with your audience. With shit like that, we don't want. It pisses me off. See, that pisses me off with like YouTube as well. When I'm trying to look for like a tutorial or some kind of hang or how to do something in a game, and I get some fucking some something that takes like forty seconds to explain is <laughs> like in, in some ten minute video. Some prick talking about fucking all this shit. I don't care about. And I'm just mm. like, mate, just fucking show me what I'm wanting. Like, Jesus Christ. I will say for Google that when you do like search stuff like video, it will suggest that the area that you're looking for is in like a marked section and it'll play that marked section if it is like a 10 minute video. But I hate, I do hate that. It like, me off. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's, I think it would just be so much easier if you could portray what you're looking for without having to explain it. Exactly. You know, because then you just get the immediate result. You wouldn't, there wouldn't be the the faff in between about how you were caught in a snowstorm and you looked in the cupboard and these were the only ingredients and, you know, you had to cut your boyfriend's leg off and you satayed <laughs> it and, it, you know, it was one of the best Christmases you ever had because of the leg. It, you know, I don't need to know about that. Just give me the recipe. Exactly. That's all you want. So, what else do you have planned for tonight? Uh, I might stream, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get, That's uh, a good get, time to stream. After I get my, after we get off the podcast, I'll probably get a bite to eat, and then I'll maybe mm-hmm. stream for a few hours. There's a, there's a, a ROM hack, a, a Pokemon ROM hack that I've uh, had my eye on, but it's just recently mm-hmm. got an English translation because it was, I think it was Spanish oh, uh, okay. that it was in, because the people that made it basically speak Spanish. Uh, but it's just got an English translation, and I might, I might check that out. Sounds pretty good. Uh, mm. I plan to eat a sandwich made from brie and uh, chutney. Mm. Have you ever had a brie and chutney sandwich? I can't say I have. Do you like brie? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I've had it or not, I'll be honest. It's a very smelly cheese. Alan hates it. <laughs> so I have to like eat all of it when I open it because once mm. you open it, it's just a very stinky cheese. I was actually it's, it's really nice. I was the other day I was I was I seen a video that was talking about all the different cheeses fair in the world and it made me want to like I was googling like is there any, is there a thing you can buy that like sends you like a bunch of like wee samples of cheeses fair in the world and all mm-hmm. that and that would be 
That'd be a cool thing to like try out. That's a cool thing. Aye. I mean, like the only ever the only kind of cheese the only cheese I really ever eat is like cheddar for the most part. So, which is good cheese, but I'd like to try some others. Brie's probably my favourite soft cheese. Mm. There's like camembert. I think that's a soft cheese. Uh, But Brie's a soft cheese, and then a mature cheddar for me. That's a really nice cheese for me. I like that. (laughs) It's just, it's just reminded me of that fucking Auntie Donna sketch. The don't fill mm. up on cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking good. Oh, you've eaten the disposables as well? <laughs> like the, the, craft <laughs> the craft singles? The craft singles? I put them out as a joke. <laughs> oh, That's so good. I fucking love Auntie Donna. Oh. Auntie Donna is... I've I've said it before. They are at the forefront of modern comedy. They are they are honestly hilarious. I love yeah. their um. See the I think it was nine the their nineteen ninety nine office thing mm. that they did. Yeah, that was, was just there was a lot amazing. of good lines in that. Mm-hmm. The fucking I, I, we're on the I, same I, I, tie. <laughs> the same tie. I watched pot never boil. I watched pot never boil. I love it. Uh, the is it big old Auntie Donna's House of Fun? Or I've still I've fun? still need to watch that actually. I've not had Netflix. I, I've not had Netflix for ages. Um, I I, I fucking I, when I, I watched that Arcane on Frankie's Netflix when he was away for a weekend. I, I sat and watched it on there, but I've no I've not actually had my own Netflix for a while, so I've still not seen that. I'd recommend it. There's there's clips on YouTube to give you a flavour, but it's mm. pretty good. I am going uh, to go and eat that sandwich. Yeah. Because I've thought about um, how I'm going to toast it, and mm. I'm going to go and get on that. So I would like to wish our listeners a very Merry Christmas. Whatever you're doing, however you celebrate Christmas your way. Merry Hope Christmas, happy, happy Hanukkah, um, other holidays that I don't know because I'm an ignorant bastard. Kwanzaa, Merry that's Chrysler. the thing. Merry Chrysler. Merry Chrysler. Merry Chrysler. <laughs> we'll see. We'll maybe do a wee Hogmanay special. Hmm. Yeah, because it'll, it'll, it'll be it'll be about that time. Mhm. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for tuning in, listeners, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.